Many people think that life isn't fair, that life is not treating them fairly, that they deserve much more. What about you? Do you think there, there is not enough love in your life? Do you think that maybe you should have met the girl of your dream, or maybe you're married, but, uh, life, uh, but love has disappeared from your life? What about money? Do you feel you have enough money? Do you, do, did you have a dream that you were supposed to be a millionaire by now and you didn't get it? Or maybe, maybe you feel that your children do not respect you and they don't listen to you as well as you, you thought you deserve. Or maybe you feel that you don't have enough sex, that you don't have, uh, maybe you're single and you don't have a girlfriend, or maybe your wife is not giving you the sex that you think that you, um, that you want. And you feel that you don't deserve it. You feel that you deserve much more. You know, the new age tells you that you're worthy, that we are all worthy, that we were born worthy. And if we only remember that we are worthy, then the love that we wanted, the money that we wanted, the abundance that we wanted, the sex that we wanted would just flow in our direction. But in this talk today, I want to tell you something a little different. My name is Amitai Meged. I'm a family therapist. I'm the head of a family and couple therapy program in uh, Tel Chai College in Israel. And, um, and, the talk, and I'm the author of five books. Uh, the last one of them is called um, uh, Being Worthy. And today I want to suggest that maybe we are not as worthy as we, as we think we are. Maybe we're not really worthy. I want to tell you a story about a couple that came to therapy. It's not an unusual couple. It's actually uh, uh, the complaints that both of them had are similar to complaints to, of, that many couples have. The wife complained that the husband doesn't want to listen to her. He comes home instead of 6 o'clock after um, his work. He sometimes stays at work until 11 o'clock at night, and only then he comes home. It seems like he's doing everything in his power not to come home uh, at the right time. And she wants him to listen to her, and she wants him to pay attention to her, and she wants him to respect her, and she wants him to listen to her advice, and he doesn't want to. And she feels she deserves more. She's, she feels she's worthy of much more. Um, and the husband, on the other hand, he wants to have much more sex. He wants, he wants to have, I don't know, at least once or twice a week sex, but they have sex like maybe once a month. And even then she's doing him a favor and it's not what he wants. And he wants more and he feels he deserves more. He feels he is worthy of more because you're, if you're married, you should have more sex than, than, what you, than what he is having. So I have this conversation with the husband and the wife. And I'm asking them all kinds of questions. And I ask the wife about herself and, uh, and what she brings to the, to the situation. And she tells me, I found out, that she's complaining. She's very bitter. She's, uh, she's bickering. She has lots and lots of complaints, lots and lots of uh, criticism towards her husband. And I ask her, so if your husband came home at 6 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock, what kind of a wife will you find? And she says, well, you know what? I understand what you're saying. He will not find a happy wife. He will not find an interesting wife. He will find a bickering and complaining wife. So I tell her, so can you understand why he's doing everything in his power, like you said, to stay home, to stay at work until 11 o'clock and not come home uh, before that? And she says, yes, I can, I can understand. So I, I'm asking you, is this woman worthy of her husband listening to her? Are we worthy just by, is, is our worthiness automatic? Is our um, worthiness something natural that we're supposed to get just because we are? Should the wife do something like, for example, maybe bring something interesting to the conversation, maybe being, be more enthusiastic? Or, or can she expect um, him listening to her when all she brings is complaints and bickering? And what about the husband? I'm asking the husband questions. And what we find out is the husband has premature ejaculations. He comes after two seconds. So what kind of sex, what kind of lovemaking is, she, is he doing with his wife? Is it uh, exciting lovemaking when you do it for two seconds at all, and that's it? And as the husband, for how many years do you have this premature ejaculation? ejaculation. And he says, I think it's all my life, since I was 15 maybe. He's 45. 
And how many years are you married? 20 years. Did you ever go to a doctor, to a sexologist, to a therapist to find out what is happening to you? And he says, uh, no. And I ask him, why not? And he says, well, you know, I didn't feel comfortable talking to a doctor about my premature ejaculation. And I said, so you didn't feel comfortable going to a doctor about your premature ejaculation, but you do feel comfortable having sex with your wife for two seconds? You feel comfortable about that? So I want to ask you, is this husband who never took care of his premature ejaculation, is he worthy of having the sex he thinks he deserves? You know, Wayne and Garth from Wayne's World, maybe some of you remember, they know that they are not worthy of meeting Alice Cooper. But not everybody knows that. Most of us think we are worthy of all kinds of things. And I want to tell you today that maybe you're not worthy. Or at least you're not worthy automatically, not naturally. Worthiness is something that we need to do something in order to be worthy. We need to earn it. I was a student of Ivan Bozermeni Naj, who was, my, um, who, who is, who was the, one of the pioneers of family therapy in, in the United States. He's from, Hungarian, uh, from Hungary. He was a psychiatrist. And he talked about uh, entitlement. Who is entitled? About earning entitlement. And his ideas came from Martin Buber and his existential um, philosophy. Martin Buber talked about a dialogue. And he talked about two kinds of relation, relations that we have with each other. One kind is the kind where we look at the other person and treat the other person as an object to satisfy our needs. The other kind of uh, relation is that when we really respect the other person, we really see the other person, we see his needs, we see his, what he wants, we appreciate his values, we respect him, and he respects us, and we respect ourselves. And only then, when we really respect the other person, and we also at the same time respect ourselves, and we bring ourselves authentically, only then can we have a real dialogue. And only then are we really worthy of something. Because having a dialogue with another person is not something that comes automatically. It's something that you need to work at. So worthiness is something you earn by your ethical actions towards others. It doesn't come automatically, you need to earn it. I want to give you my definition of worthiness. So worthiness is an internal permission to receive abundance and pleasure resulting from self-worth, which is based on actions that are founded on integrity, dialogue, seeing the needs of the other, contribution, and authentic self-expression. I want to go into the, this definition. Self-worth. So self-worth is not something that, that just comes out automatically. Self-worth is based on actions that are founded on integrity dialogue, seeing the needs of the other, contribution, and authentic self-expression. That means that our self-worth is based on something that we do. And only then can we give ourselves this permission to receive abundance and pleasure really give this, this um, uh, permission. Walk on this earth feeling that we are worthy of something. You know, we can be in three different mental states. We can be in a state of defeat, or in a state of self-entitlement, or in a state of worthiness. So let's talk about defeat. You know, when a person is defeated, he doesn't feel that he worth, is worth anything. He doesn't feel he deserves anything. Let's take a person who wants to have a raise in his salary. So a person who is defeated does not feel that. He doesn't think he, he is worth uh, going to his uh, boss and talking to him about raising, uh, a raise in the salary. People with, uh, in a self-entitlement or worthiness um, state of uh, mind, they they feel that they deserve uh, having a raise in their um, salary, but they come from very different um, positions. A person who, is self from, who, is, who feels self-entitlement, he goes to his boss and asks for, for raising the salary. You know why? Because other people got it. Why did they get um, a raise in the salary and I didn't? He thinks he should be compensated, and he's angry that he didn't get the raise like other people uh, got. On the other hand, people with worthiness, they come from a very different position. 
they feel that they're worthy of having a raise because they contribu contributed to their uh, work, to their place of work. And when they come and ask for a raise in their salary, they want the salary to reflect their contribution. Now, there is also a difference between how both people will get a, a no for an answer. The, paper with, the person with the self-entitlement will be angry and will feel that he was done wrong and he will talk to all his colleagues and tell them how, um, uh, about his talking with, with his boss and he will maybe raise his voice. The person with worthiness, if he gets no for an answer, he thinks about it and he says to himself, well, maybe I can stay in this work and accept it, or maybe I can go and find myself another work. He's very quiet. He's in the center. Now, there are two ways to lose worthiness. One is to treat other people unfairly, and the other is to let other people treat you unfairly. When you treat other people unfairly, you, in a way, steal worthiness that you didn't earn. When you manipulate other people or abuse other people, you try to steal something. And that makes you unworthy. Stealing your worthiness makes you unworthy. On the other hand, letting other people abuse you, letting your parents abuse you, or your spouse abuse you, or your children use you, manipulate you, uh, take advantage of you, and not doing anything about it, not standing to your right, and not um, um, refusing to uh, get this unfairness, that also makes you unworthy. Um, I want to tell you about a story about my son, Yoav. I have three sons. And at, at that time, they were 19, he was 17, and the uh, little one was 15. And I was a single parent. They were living with, with me. And um, their mother lived um, uh, at the same street. Um, and I had chores in my house, written on the refrigerator. And the oldest one and the youngest one, they were okay with the chores. And they liked contributing, and they even enjoyed contributing. My son, Yoav, didn't like it. He always had an excuse, and he would, he would just disappear at the, at the time that he had to do something around the house. And you know what? He wasn't happy. He wasn't happy at home. He wasn't happy at school. It was a very difficult time in his life. So I'm telling him, you know, you have this and this chore. And he says, no, I have something, and it's not fair. And he goes, uh, he, he goes out of the house, and he goes to my ex-wife. He thought he would get support from her. But we were on the same page. He didn't get support from her. He stayed there for two hours. And after two hours, he calls me, and he wants to talk to me. In those two hours, I had a long conversation with myself. And in this conversation, I, I understood something. You know, this is a frame from an animation that you have, my son, made to me. At that point, I gave him a job, uh, and I paid for him uh, for the. Uh, I paid him for the job, and the job was to do animations for my um, uh, business. And we sat for hours and did this animation. And you know what happened? What happened was that when we sat there, actually he became like a colleague of mine and not like a child. And the more I sat with him and we enjoyed it, the more I felt uncomfortable talking to him about his chores and demanding something from him. And um, I didn't want to lose this nice uh, um, relationship that we had, this special relationship that we had. But his two other, uh, my two other children, they looked at him, and they were angry at him, and they looked at me. What are you going to do about it, they were thinking. So that's, so that's what I was thinking all those two hours. And when he came home after two hours, he started having those complaints and telling all kinds of things to me. By the way, I got his permission to talk about it in this, in this talk. Um, he's 25 now, and he's a musician. He does electronic music. Um, and, um, and I said to him, you know, I did you wrong. I missed something here because I didn't demand that you contribute. And because I didn't demand that you contribute to the house, I actually didn't give you a chance to earn worthiness because you earn worthiness only when you contribute. And you know what? I don't like it anymore. And I, I'm going to demand that you contribute. You need to contribute. And he tried to argue with me for 20 minutes. He looked at me, seeing if I'm serious. 
And I was very quiet and serious. And he said, you're a tyrant. And I said, well, maybe I'm a tyrant, and maybe that's, I should be a tyrant sometimes, if that will move you. And after 20 minutes, he said, okay, I will contribute. And something happened to him. He, was, he became, when he started contributing to the house, he became much more happier at home and at school. The worthiness is not, so you know what? He became more, more worthy, and I became more, more worthy. Because you're not, if a, you are a parent and you let your child not contribute, you're not worthy as a parent. So he became more, more worthy, and I became more worthy. Because worthiness is something that you earn by contributing. Children and adults earn worthiness by contributing. This is the smiling Buddha from Vietnam. And um, it is said that he worked on his enlightenment for many, many years. You know, he fasted a lot, and he did all kinds of uh, very, very difficult exercises. And, uh, and he invented Vipassana, which he is known for, his meditation. And after many years, he felt that he should be enlightened by now, but he knew he needs to go through a very dark night, last night in which he will meet his own demons. So he sat there for the last night of meditation, and he met his demons, and he sat there quietly, and he was quiet meeting his demons. And in the morning he knew he's worthy of enlightenment. And he got his enlightenment. And he, something opened up, and he got this uh, esoteric knowledge, which he taught to humanity afterwards. So this is me at his feet. <laughs> I'm trying also to, uh, I don't know what, become enlightened. And, um, and I want to ask you, this is the end of our talk, and I want to send you home with a few thoughts. I want to ask you to look at places where you feel that you don't deserve enough, that your children don't respect you, that you don't get the love or the sex that you want, that you don't get the money that you want, and you feel that it's not fair. And I want to ask you to look inside and see, am I worthy of receiving it? Thank you very much. <laughs>